welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. This is episode 6 of season 12. Goodness, is it? Yeah, right? And we'll be playing a room together. Every episode we have guests come on, and in this case they'll run us through a room that only exists in their mind and brain and piece of paper and PDF and all that sort of stuff. Uh, And this episode, the guest game master is Matt Johnson. Welcome, Matt. Hello. Thanks for having me on your show. We're excited to play the room. All I know, I've got one word at the top of my page, which is all I know about the room so far, which is observatory. That's all I've got. Is there like is there like a teaser, a spiel that we should know before we go in? A genre. Sure. So yeah, you are going to be trapped inside a astronomical observatory, and you thought that it was just a late night party there, but who knows when you wake up the next morning what you'll find. <laughs> Oh, fun. I think probably just a late night party. I think there's no escape room. I think we just go to observatory and leave, we leave. But we're not going to get to that yet. We have something to do first, which is every time we have a guest on the show, we have the same two questions. This is an escape room show. Matt, what is your escape room experience? Yeah, so I've done a small handful of physical escape rooms, one in Utah, one in Florida, and four in uh, my hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, beyond that, i uh, just kind of lots of uh, point and click adventure games uh, from everything from like the Monkey Island series, other LucasArts adventure games, the Myst series, and other puzzle games like Portal or Talos Principle or The Witness, things like that. Nice. Nice. Um, I think this is one of those things that is, for, for especially for virtual escape room, for this type of design, is more important. And I think it's an enjoyment of point and click adventures. I think there's so such a similarity in style. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, so I think that'll that'll put you in good stead. I think. Uh, I was always my favorite Lucas Arts point and click was. Uh, it's always been Grim Fandango. I love Grim Fandango. That's a good one. An yeah, absolute Dave. classic. Day of the Tentacle is another great one. <laughs> mm. only... Day of the Tentacle is so ambitious. We've we started playing it, uh, but we ha- we haven't continued on yet because like it's so like you can be here and here and there's like there's three time periods and three characters and then you can jump between them at any point. It's like it's really really uh, very cool. Uh, I'm I'm excited to get into it more, um, but I haven't p- p- played much of it yet. All right, the other question, of course, this is an escape room show, but it is escape rooms mixed with a sort of tabletop role-playing veneer (laughs) what is your tabletop role-playing experience uh definitely a lot less in that experience uh not too much into like tabletop role-playing but i do play a good amount of just tabletop like board games whether Mm. it's uh, party style games or cooperative games some strategy games things like that one enough well i think in that case we're probably ready to get right in right probably i think oh yeah I'm still trying to think on what my answer would be of what's my classic point and click game. Danny, what is your classic point know. and click game? I don't know. I'm sure I have one. What you is it? Love um uh, Police Quest 2. Come on, give me something I've played. Did you play a bunch of point and click que- games as a kid? I feel like I must have. I think the biggest but... drawback for you is that you had a PlayStation and not a good gaming computer when you were a child. But I had a mass of DOS games. Surely some of them were point and click. Mm, I don't think so. I think the most puzzles you got out of your DOS games was Boxman, where you had to block Blockman, box- Blockman. Billy. Sorry, not Boxman. Blockman, where he put blocks on top of other blocks and I climbed mean, those blocks. I had my text pauses. Hugo South Safaris. Oh, yeah, I but... think that counts. It's not technically a point and click, no. but that's just because they didn't really know if anyone would have a mouse back then. <laughs> they were like, I don't know if you've got a mouse, so we can't point and click. It's that pro. But those text parser games, Hugo's House of Horrors uh, and, and games like that, fantastic. And presumably, I believe also, the game that inspired Day of the Tentacle, Maniac Mansion, was a text parser game. Yeah, the whole scum engine, script creation utility for Maniac Mansion. Yeah, it was kind of a hybrid of. Where you had the graphic adventure graphics, but then you kind of had the legacy of verb object mm. with noun. Yeah, it's this, this, this really nice moment where computer games are transitioning out of full text adventures like, like Zork or whatever. And trying to be like, well, we want to have graphics, but also how do you interact with them? Ah, don't worry, it's just like a text adventure. And want- so often they came with a little description of what was happening at the bottom, yeah. but they just had pictures. Uh, I want to say my primary school pr- had a bunch of them on their computers. Oh, uh, fun. Because, I mean, to an extent, you could say that Granny's Garden is like that. Granny's Garden is like an educational... Oh, it's, it's not educational. No, it's not? Oh, no. Okay. Well, it is just mouse clicking around. You're trying to avoid a witch and free some children That's that have educational. been That's educational? What if you get attacked by a witch? <laughs> you got to know how to get out of there. 
You know, that's the problem. If you got attacked by the witch, you were dead. That's education. Taught you nothing. Teaches kids to give up hope in an in, in event of a <laughs> But I attack. do think they like those educational point and click ones. So the only ones I can remember, I can't find Google proof of anywhere. Oh, they're just these obscure little games somewhere? Yeah, like, I swear we had one that was like called just Wolf's Bone. And Everyone at home, or please Google. Bone, something like that. And sure, you try to Google like Edumate or whatever it was called. That's not it. That's, no, that's an education it. website. Whatever you call those games, and one about a dog finding a bone, and they'll have one, but it's not what I'm remembering. If anyone can find it, we'll reward you. <laughs> we put a bounty out on Wolf's Bone, the point and click adventure from Danny's childhood. 1996 or 1996. so. 1996. Go find it, and we'll and we'll send you something. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, I think with that, we could probably get into the game. Yes, because we have also been told that this could be a long one, so we've got to get our serious faces on. We've got to get serious. Everyone who's at home, you think, oh, these two weirdos, whatever they play these games fools. together, they, 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 they waste time and they don't solve. Well, That's this not is, happening today. Today, we're getting right into it. We're going to smash this room out. It's a, and we're going to be done in 45 minutes. It's going <laughs> to be amazing. Um, we're ready to go. We're in serious solve mode. Until, like, halfway through where Danny suddenly shouts the name of an obscure point-and-click adventure that she's just remembered. But until that point, we're in serious mode. No, we're not. We're going to have some fun. Um, I think let's, let's enter the observatory. Matt, whisk us away. All right. After moving to Thampine, Michigan about a month ago at the start of 2007, you were excited to hear about the town's local astronomy club hosting an open house at their observatory. You've always had a mild interest in astronomy, so you decide to check it out on a Sunday evening. The night's festivities were great, but as excited as you are to take in the sights and the snacks, you begin to grow tired as the night wears on, knowing that work the next morning will come way too soon. You sit down next to a wall to rest your eyes for a moment before you drive home. The next thing you hear is your watch's alarm early the next morning before sunrise. You mindlessly silence it and start to get up, then immediately realize something's wrong. You're not in your bed at home. You fell asleep at the observatory and no one noticed. You can quickly see why. You're curled up in a small, dark space underneath the stairwell, with a fallen poster from last night's events limply draped over you, <laughs> tucking you into your makeshift bed, hiding you from view. Panic sets in as you realize you need to get to work in just a couple hours. You push the poster out of your way, and examine your surroundings. The observatory is now empty and nearly pitch dark before sunrise. Is an observatory... I want to draw a rectangle, but I feel like an observatory is round. I feel like they're all round. But I've drawn the square already. <laughs> I'll, I'll put a circle... I'll, I'll square the circle. I'll put a circle inside mm -hmm. the square. Actually, the very next sentence I was going to say, the building consists of two circular rooms, one above oh. the other. Exit sign is above the door... Uh, that gives a faint glow that allows you to see your initial surroundings. And I will actually send you a map of... Oh, what am I doing drawing a map? I'm wasting my time! I said I'd be in serious solving mode and I'm wasting time drawing my own map. All right, so we... Oh, it looks lovely. Ooh. we got a beautiful little uh, 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 map of the two floors of this room with a compass direction as well, just in case, which makes me scared that with a supplied map and a compass direction, I'm very worried we're going to have to like tie things together. I don't know why that's a worry. So looking at this lower floor, I might do... Are we on the lower or upper right now? Yeah, so I, I can describe the lower floor, and when you explore the upper floor, I can give you some more descriptions there. No Please player. describe the lower floor. A stairway runs on the eastern side, curving from the southeast of this floor to the northeast on the floor above. At your feet on the eastern side, near the stairs, is the poster that you slept under. Yeah. To the northeast, under the top of the stairway is a small supply closet that protrudes from the wall. Uh, to the north, there is a single filing cabinet. To the northwest, there is a table from last night's open house where guests could find out more about the club or enter a fundraising raffle. To the southwest, there is a scale model of the solar system. To the south is the exit door. And to the southeast, you notice a light switch between the exit and Ooh. stairway. Thank you. I did not notice that. I did think there was a based on the art. I did think there was a giant iPhone sitting on the floor <laughs> uh, instead of the table. Wonderful. And we haven't gone upstairs, so we won't we won't do the description of upstairs yet. Are we free to start playing? Yeah, the room is free to 
to explore. Ooh, Danny, what do you want to check out? We're in serious mode. Let's stagger towards the exit. Yeah, let's just leave. <laughs> Solve the room. All right. You head down to the exit and uh, you try and open the door, but it is firmly locked. It seems like locked with some sort of deadbolt. To the right of the door, you see there's a button labeled door release and a note hanging next to it. The note reads, uh-huh. broken, repairman coming to fix later this week. Make sure no one's in here before locking up for the night. The door has a small window in its center, and out the window you can see the parking lot and a path leading to the parking lot. Uh, You look outside, it's fairly dark, but you also notice there's a small card reader on the opposite side of the door. Aha, so if we can't get out through this, we can like dangle... (gasps) What if we could dangle a card from a window on the second floor on on a fishing line? And, and go beep and slide it that way. I was thinking we could just use the giant iPhone to call someone with a card we reader. Could, we could. <laughs> um, I don't know if you did the same as me, Danny, but I was so intently being like, okay, it's 2007. It's maybe February. It's Sunday. Because I just figured it's an observatory room. They might have to like line up the, the light, like the stars to what they're meant to be on that date or something like that. Okay. I heard observatory. I was like, dates are going to matter. And now it's like, oh, a week later. So maybe the repairman's coming on, on a, a Sunday second week. I'm just very Did confused. we hear 2007 or did you just say 2007? No, it's 2007, it was? I think, right? <laughs> yep. Damn it. See, How did I miss why that? Why would someone set it in 2007 unless it's relevant to a I wrote a, down an underlined puzzle. Sunday, but I didn't <laughs> hear 2007. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah, you, okay. Now I understand why you looked at me so weird. I didn't just make that up. Huh. Um. Okay, so that's the door. We can't get out. Uh, shall we continue looking around at nearby things? Absolutely. We are going to need energy if we're going to stay here. Uh, maybe that info desk, maybe someone left some food behind there. Okay, so we're, we're going over to the, the table with information from last night. That's my plan. Let's do it. Sure, you wander over to the open house table, and it is a fairly cheap table with a thin tablecloth on it. Uh, on top of the table, you see a tape dispenser and a raffle box. The tape dispenser is full of clear, sticky cellophane tape. Um, you notice on the side of the tape dispenser, there is a sticker with the name Rapunzel written on it. Hmm. As for the raffle box, uh, it is a little larger than a shoebox, uh, cylindrical, made of a hard wire mesh. There's a huh. slit uh, in... There's a slit in the side of it for inserting entries, a crank that allows for tumbling, and a hinged flap that uh, is locked with a small lock that requires a key. Uh, Last night, the club was raffling off a toy rocket in exchange for donations to support the club. Unfortunately, you didn't win, but the container is about half full of loosely packed entries. Now, I'm assuming, even though it's a mesh, like, can we read what's on those entries? You can certainly see what's inside there, but yeah, there's no way you're going to be able to uh, extract any of those. No, without the key. Um, okay, interesting. Do you want to, do we need uh, to? Just the, yeah, let's find out. Do we need to do a quick check? Under the desk, do we need to rip off the tablecloth uh, very quickly so that nothing falls, but so that we can examine what's under it, that sort of thing? Mm, yeah, can we do a thorough rummage? Sure. You peek around the table, you look underneath. Uh, the only things you find underneath the tablecloth are just various party supplies. Uh, nothing too much of interest. You help yourself to some of the leftover snacks, but um, yeah, nothing else that uh, seems of interest under the table. Cool. Oh, nice. Now, do you reckon that's true, or do you reckon it's like, we'll, we'll need to look for something particular and we'll come back? We'll find I out. Need LaCroix. <laughs> Where is that LaCroix? Um, okay. LaCroix doesn't even exist here, does it? It's not, I don't think that exists Not in that I know of. To the point where if I see it written down, I need to remind La myself that that's probably how it's pronounced. La Croix. Um, okay. I want to go see a poster. Sure. All right. So you wander over to the poster, which I shall send you an image of that. Ooh, I can see the poster. While we're waiting for that to load, when you draw a tape dispenser, do you just draw a snail? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. It's that's a little snail. It's a snail. Yeah, yeah, I hundred percent. I I was gonna call you out on. It. I was gonna say that's crazy, but then I looked and I said, no, that's a hundred percent just what it is. Welcome to Ooh, the boy. anniversary, but with a little tear. The so maybe it's the anniversary. It says uh, the tenth 
anniversary. But yeah, there's a little tear there. So maybe it's actually oh, the 10th, 10th anniversary. Plan anniversary of the. Uh, th- is it the, Thampine? Or Tampine? Uh, Tampine. Uh, Tampine. Thampine. Thampine. Half, half. Thampine Astronomy Club. Sunday, February 4th. I told you it was in February. 2007, 7 p.m. to midnight. A brief history of the observatory and club. There's also a picture of an observatory there. The observatory finished construction and was opened on October 5th, 1990. Oh, I'm sorry. You were five days too early. That would have been my birthday. Don't dox yourself online, Danny. I'm, I'm, no, it's fine. I'll keep it in. <laughs> I, I don't think this season I've been shy about telling people when my birthday is. True. Uh, a new motorised dome system was installed on May 14th, 1992. Rips and tears. Held first club meeting. Exactly five years later, upgraded the telescope to a computerised control system. And on January 8th, 2007, our 50th member was inducted. Thank you for coming. So that was quite recent. Help support us by making a donation or joining our club. And there are little stars in the corner. We slept on this thing really badly to cause all these tears. Maybe it was torn and that's why we slept on it. Because we were like, ah, no one's going to miss that. So we are, we've got a lot of dates here that feel like they could be important for mm-hmm. comparative reasons, putting together some sort of timeline. But we have no idea who held the first club meeting or when. But Except if we can that it was find between out between 1992 and 2007. Well, also if we can find out exactly when the telescope was upgraded That's to a computerized true. control system, like if there's like a installed on X date, then we can find out when the first club meeting was. Of course. Uh, that's fun. All right. What's next? Oh, uh, what is it? It's next? a great poster, by the way. I mean, surely the solar system model won't yeah, take yeah. long. No, it'll just be a model of the solar system. The solar system model is on top of a pedestal where there are nine planets suspended, despite Pluto recently being demoted to dwarf planet status. See, that was what I first thought of when you said 2007, how close it was to that. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun little uh, That was 2006. Fa- <laughs> I remember it. Last night, the planets were slowly orbiting, but no longer. Each planet is made of wood, hand-painted, and suspended by thin wires connected to a central gearbox. The light bulb of the sun that had been shining is now missing. An empty socket oh. remains. Around the pedestal, uh, you see various signs with astronomy facts. And on the back of the pedestal, there is a power cord that runs to a nearby outlet, outlet that is unplugged. And here is another image Ooh. of the signs around the pedestal. You know what bothers me the most, Danny? What's that? You know what bothers me as a, as a human being the most is that we have received these images, and those images are numbered. And they're numbered one, two, three, and we've opened them in the order one, two, three. We're so predictable. <laughs> Danny, would you like to start? Okay, so how would you describe these posters? Like multiple posters, but fit together so that they yeah. are one message sort of going across it in a very brochure sort of way. Yeah, but it's kind of like... folded the middle of a brochure. It's like every poster is self-contained except for the large title mm. over the top that goes between all three little sections. And so that large title is, The planets have meant many things to many people over time. Here are three ways that planets connect us to cultures, past and present. All right. All right, the first of the three posters is... Letters written in the night sky by the divine. To ancient people, planets were signs from the gods that spelled out divine messages. Often, rituals formed around the solstices and equinoxes to interpret these omens. Today, we understand how the planet's tilt of axis and orbit changes the seasons. And then with a little uh, set of summer, autumn, winter and spring solstices and equinoxes, or equinoxes if you Just prefer, with the it, yeah. relevant dates. So I think that's good reference material Absolutely. for the dates of solstice. So in the middle bit of information is numerical constants of the universe. Observations of planetary motion have greatly influenced science and mathematics from our understanding of gravity to equations on space-time relativity. Each planet has a myriad of interesting statistics, <laughs> that including are all the following. Out. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we've got the names of the planets, we've got their pictures, and you can see that there are facts underneath, but they are a little bit blurry, enough so that we are not meant to be able to glean them from these posters. They are not going to be useful to us here. Do you think the reason that that's blurred out is because it's not relevant and actually the only relevant thing that we need is this is a way for us to know the order of the planets without it being outside knowledge. That was my understanding, yes. What's your acronym, he said, 
breaking his promise to not waste time in this room. What's your acronym for the planets? I never bothered with one you just because them? there's a Simpsons episode where Bart gets a hundred percent on an astronomy test because it, he's trapped in a cupboard. And he just says them, and you've remembered that? And he just covers his ears and says, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, over and over again. And, and just, that's you're, it. You're such a weird person. <laughs> I don't have one. I never remember them. Um, and then the final one is measuring of days and the passage of time. Orbital cycles have long been used to measure time. A day and year correspond to the Earth's rotation and orbit. Months are related to the moon's phases. Even the days of the week are named after seven visible objects that traverse the sky. Sunday, the sun. Monday, the mun. <laughs> Tuesday, Mars. <laughs> Wednesday, Mercury. Thursday, Jupiter. Friday, Venus. Saturday, Saturn Day. I know that you started with Sunday because it's at the top of the diagram, but it still made me mad. It's at the top of the diagram. You can't stop me. I'm a start of the week Mondayer. You're a fool. You're a you're a wrong I'm fool. A die hard Monday person. A die hard incorrect date teller. <laughs> um, okay, so we got some stuff. Do you reckon that last one is just in case we forgot the the order of the days of the week, and it's to help remind <laughs> us of the order of the week, just so it's not outside knowledge to huh? you know that Tuesday comes after Monday. Uh, all right, I that's we got some info. Yeah, that's definitely going to be helpful when it comes to answering puzzles. Yes, should we plug it? Do you think uh, it's a puzzle in and of itself? Oh, who knows? Let, let's plug it in and see what happens. The, I mean, not the poster. Plug it in. The the solar system. Let's plug oh, the solar system. I was going to like try and plug in the information <laughs> we got here into like a, a number lock somewhere. Like just put in uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Just see what happens. Uh, you're right. We should try and plug it in. Can we plug in the? Don't, why solar did you close system? that? Yeah, you're right. It was an accident. Yeah, so you plug in the solar system model, and unfortunately nothing happens. You suspect that with the uh, sun missing that the circuit yeah. isn't complete. Don. That's fair. Okay, let's find a light bulb at mm -hmm. some point. You know where I'd look for a light bulb? A storage closet? closet. Can we check out the storage closet? So you wander over to the storage closet, and you try and open it, but it is locked. Uh, there's <gasps> a keypad on its front. It has digits one through nine. Okay. We haven't seen a, a, a code yet, have we? No, we've seen lots of bits of information, but nothing that has made me yet go, this, this, answer puzzle mm, here. True. So I suppose we should check out the filing cabinet. Yeah, let's check out the we've filing still got cabinet. That. We've still got the light switch. And, and then we can go upstairs. Yep. Let's check out the filing cabinet. You wander over to the filing cabinet, and the filing cabinet has two locked drawers. The top drawer is labeled 1990s. It is locked with a rotating combination lock. Uh, the lock has numbers 0 through 59. These types of locks usually take a series of three two-digit numbers. Oh, like a, like a school locker lock. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly, yep. So yeah, numbers 0 through 59 on it that requires three numbers in combination. You examine the lock a little more closely, and you find etched on the back three Ooh. letters, S-H-M. The bottom drawer is labeled 2000s, and it is locked with a padlock that requires a key. Okay. We need a key. Um, I need to get better at drawing padlocks. You'd think by now I'd be okay at it, but I feel pretty miserable. Did the solar system get us anything S-H-M-E, those posters? See, eight, there are plenty of S's and plenty of M's. But H, H is a bit weird. not as much. Yeah, good point. Good point. Hmm. All right. Um, unless it's how many H's are in the poster. That well, yeah, I was just... Nonsense. Des I mean, no, I was just deciding to look and say, oh, the splits in the like brochure, the brochure folds, are they anywhere for... Yeah, they're not, not really. Not yet. Not yet. Not that something means, is meaningful to me. Um, okay, wonderful. Well, why don't we just quickly check out the light switch in case there's anything more than just the lights go on and off. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be under the impression that it will do stuff, but we may not know what it does yet. Yeah, true. Can we check but... out the light switch? Are the lights on or off at the moment? You said it was dark? Yeah, yeah it was fairly dark. Uh, it was a little hard to read stuff, but uh, yeah, you go over to the light switch and yeah, you turn it on and definitely a lot easier to read stuff. Uh, <laughs> you wish you had turned on the lights beforehand so that you weren't straining the dark reading this. <laughs> You've um, got strong eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so mean. <laughs> As you turn on the light switch, uh, you do notice that the lights on both floors uh, turn on and off uh, as uh, you yeah. flip it. I wonder right, that. Well, At least now someone on. will know that there's somebody inside here. 
Oh, can we just flip it on and off in Morse code saying help, help, help? SOS. On, on, on. SHM. SHM. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave them on and head up the stairs, shall Sounds we? Sounds good. All right. So you head up the stairs and you exit the stairway at the northeast. And you see that the stairway is kind of open to the floor with a railing around the eastern side. Uh, there's another light switch at the top of the stairs here, which you confirm uh, is just like the one at the bottom floor that turns on and off both floors lights. In the center of the room is the most prominent feature of the room, the telescope. To the north on the wall is a control panel that you saw members use to control the dome. To the northwest is a desk with a binder and an old computer that's connected to the telescope. To the west is a calendar of various events. To the southwest is a small fridge. To the south, there is a clock that hangs on the wall. And above you is the observatory dome. There's a track that runs around the edge of the room that supports and rotates the dome. And the opening of the dome is currently facing towards the north, but it is closed. So we've got the control panel, the desk with the computer and the binder, the calendar, the fridge, the telescope, the clock, and the dome is currently facing north but closed. When the dome opens, like when I picture a, a, an observatory dome opening, I always picture it opening like fully. So like if, if it opened to the north, it would also be open to the south and all the way directly above us. Is that kind of the way it looks like it would just kind of like a little sliding door? Based on the previous night when the club members were operating the telescope in the dome, it seems like the dome would only open maybe uh, 30 to 45 degrees. Okay. Okay, cool. What was the other thing besides a binder that was on the desk? The sorry? computer. There's an actual computer on the desk. Yeah. Um, is there a place you'd like to start on this floor? No, we didn't actually look at the stairs as we walked up and down. We should probably check oh, those out, check out the railings. See yeah, if is there anything, anything interesting, interesting about the stairs? Any hidden messages? The stairs look fairly normal. Um, yeah, just connect the two floors on the eastern side. Uh, yeah, there's a railing on this upper floor that uh, just prevents people from falling down on the other side. A likely um, story that that's all it does. Fair. All right, well, let's have a con 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 continued look around. Yep, absolutely. What are you thinking? I think we should check out the fridge. Why? No reason. Let's start with the fridge. Yeah, those party snacks were not enough. You wander over to the mini fridge. There's a sign on the fridge that says club members only. But given your situation, you ignore the sign and peek inside. Yeah. Inside, you find several cans of energy drink. And in the freezer section at the top, there is a frozen glass. For these energy drinks, it is a 12-pack of Supernova brand energy drinks. The packaging says there are two of each of the six included flavors. You count that there are 10 remaining cans, blueberry, blueberry, cherry, orange, lemon, lime, grape, lemon, cherry, and grape. All right. Do you get, how much of that did you get? I got them all, baby. You got them all? Tell me. Blueberry? Uh, blah. Blah. Yeah. Ch. Okay. Cherry? Yeah. Okay. O. Orange. Le. Lemon. Lie. Lime. Gr. Grape. Le. Lemon. Ch. Cherry. And gr. Grape. You now, can learn shorthand, Billy. Come on. Can we figure out what the... Is that all... How many flavors do we have? We have that. blueberry, cherry, orange, lemon, lime, grape. Okay, yeah, so we have uh, all six flavors. Someone's what drunk missing? an orange, someone's drunk a lime. Okay, so we've lost an orange, we've lost a lime. All right, good, good note taking. Um, taking this seriously. Those are the supernova brand Mega Lacroix. Okay, so we've got to find out about orange lime supernovas. Yeah, someone's going to be like, when a dwarf star collapses, it turns into an orangey lime supernova. Well, <gasps> oh my god! I mean, they say you know, oh, here's what the center of the universe tastes like. It tastes like raspberries and uh, that sort yeah, of thing. It like an I have lime never heard anyone talk about what flavor a supernova is. Orange lime. And you said there was a frozen glass in the freezer? 
Yeah, in the small freezer section at the top of the fridge, there is a clear cup that's filled with looks like some sort of freeze-dried energy drink. Um, Mm -hmm. And suspended in this rock-hard syrup is a brass key. Its handle is poking out, kind of like a lollipop. There's a note that's attached to the glass that reads, Seriously, whoever keeps sticking random objects in the freezer, stop it. It's not funny anymore. Not only is it wasteful of our drink budget, but now I can't even unlock the filing cabinet. Next time we catch you doing something like this, we're kicking you out of the club. I'm so torn as to whether we need to melt this down and get the key out of it, or pull the key out, throw it away, and then use the syrup to make a mold of another key. <laughs> and make, a, make the mold of a new key using the key that's already there. But given the key's there, I think maybe we need to... But it's got its handle sticking out. It's such a mold. It's a key mold. I'm so confused. Yeah, if we pull on the key, is it firmly stuck or does the key and the syrup all come out? It is firmly stuck in there. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any way that you're going to be able to just, like, pry it loose. Do we have a microwave or anything? We don't, do uh, we? Not that I've noticed, because I've been trying to think, like, we could just take it out and wait for it to melt, but that sounds like it's going to be a pain. The sun. The sun will melt it. What? When we get the light bulb, that'll melt the key. Okay, so... Oh, not the real sun. No, not the real sun. That's a <laughs> powerless figurehead. Open the dome a little more and put it in our direction. No, we need the, 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 the mechanical sun. Actually, on that note, does the frozen glass come out, or is it also like frozen to its freezer shelf? Uh, you can take it out, but yeah, even if you take it out of the freezer, it's not going to thaw by itself no. for several hours. Uh, February morning in... Thampine, Good point. Michigan. Oh, yeah. Michigan, February sounds like it if could get it better. Out, if we take it out of the freezer, it'll get colder. <laughs> People put in things in the freezer oh, no. to warm them up in Thampine, Michigan. I did not Michigan, consider that. Um, in February. So I think that's what it's going to be. I think we need to find the, the sun light bulb. So let's continue looking around. Shall we look at the clock? Let's do it. You wander over to the clock, and it has rotating flip panels for the digits of hours, minutes, and seconds. You look at your watch, and it's definitely displaying a different time. And you glanced at it when you came up the stairs, and it definitely hasn't changed its time. The time that it's displaying is 10, 27, 42. Oh, got it. That sounds... I run away. I run downstairs. To the other part of the filing cabinet? To the 1990s filing cabinet. Seems like it's worth checking. SHM, seconds, hours, minutes. Oh, that's perfect. That's what it is. Uh, Can we put in to the... uh, as the first of the digits, we, we, we twist to the right until we hit 42, 42. And then we twist back to the left until we hit uh, 10. And then we twist back to the right until we hit 27. You twist it each way and the lock comes off and the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> We're in solving mode, everybody. No time to waste. I throw the lock across the room. So you open the drawer and inside there are binders labeled 1990 through 1999. A very good time for astronomy. Telescopes everywhere. Yes. Do we, we, do we have anything we want to look up? Presumably the party. But we don't know when the party Wait, was. Wait, what? I don't know. I like looking up the party. What party? The party that the, the we missed. The first club meeting. Oh, the first club meeting that we don't know a date or for. Or should we check October 5th, 1990? For when the observatory finished construction and was opened. I mean... I guess we can check a couple of those important dates that we're aware of. Yeah, is there anything interesting if we go to the, those dates on from the poster? Let's start with the, uh, the opening of the observatory. On October 5, 1990, uh, you find the entry and it reads, First day of the new observatory. Started a log to record observations for our research. Many thanks to Thampine University for the grant that made this possible. Okay. That sounds in order. And if we check out May 14th, 1992. You look up May 14th, 1992. The entry there reads, Good riddance. The dome has finally been motorized. We got funding last month and installed it today. The controls are kind of confusing, but it sure is better than manually moving the dome each night. And inserted next to that entry, there is a photocopy of the dome's user manual. You flip through it, um, and you find a page titled Operating Instructions. Sending you another image. Okay. Ha-ha! We've done it! It's number five! We skipped a number! (laughs) We're the best! Okay, Uh, so... Do you want to have a read for the people at home? For the people at home, you can see all these images in the episode, uh, in the show notes uh, below. 
Uh, but Danny will read you this one. Does indeed say operating instructions. Uh, we've got six rectangular box looking things that could mm-hmm. reference like rectangular buttons or something. Yeah. So the top row, it's three per row, two rows. First one, we've got action one, open, close. And then underneath that, action two, left, right. To power on slash off the system, press and hold action one and action two simultaneously. To open, close the dome, press action one twice, then hold open or close. To rotate the dome, press action two twice, then hold left or right. Then there's some handwriting underneath. Which says, sorry, I wired it up incorrectly, but it still works. To close the dome and power off for the night, just use the top row of buttons. Rotate right is diagonally adjacent to both action buttons. Open is sort of to the left of action one. What? Oh, get out of here. So what does that mean, actually? To close the dome and power off the night, just use the top row of buttons, right? So, this basically, all these buttons are labelled incorrectly, yes. roughly. Now, uh, what does it normally say that you would do to close the dome and power Press action off? one and two simultaneously. So that would be to power off. Which means we know that one and two are both on the top row, right? And also, close must be on the top row, because it says to close the dome and power off for the night. Use the top row. Oh, action one twice, then hold open and, or close. Hold open or... Oh, I see. So we've got action one and action two for the powering off, but action one and close to close the dome. So those three must okay. be on top. So one, two, and close are on the top. Yep. Open, left, and right are on the bottom. Now, we know that right is diagonally adjacent to both action buttons. To be diagonally adjacent and also in a different row, that means right must be in the middle of the bottom row and the two actions are top left, top right. I agree. Okay. So we know where uh, right is. I hope this makes sense for everybody at home. Uh, and then open is to the left of action one. Well, act, that means action one, to have anything to the left, the must right. be in the top right. So one. It does say sort of to the left, so somewhere to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we now know it must be in the middle. No, no, I see. It must, it must be bottom left. Yeah. And then close is top middle. Two is top left, and the bottom right must be left. So I believe. Now the order of the, the buttons. Code. I've got sorry. Act two, close. Act one, open right left. That's correct to my interpretation. This is good to know. Okay, again, we don't like now. We may be able to work this dome. What we need that for? Still uncertain. Oh, we'll have to. I know what we need it for. Mm-hmm. We need to turn the dome to the south. Open it. Drop a little key card on a string. <laughs> And, wh- and swipe course, the door. I know how to do this room. I know the, sol- Wait, the solution. When you open the dome, is it actually... I don't know. This feels like a stupid question. Is now. it actually open? Yeah. Like, full on opening, like an opening that... Y- that you could walk through? Can, yeah. I mean... Or is it just glass? Is it opening a metal case to expose a window? Look, either possibly is it opening a window, yes. Or is it just opening a telescope-sized hole? No, it, it, they go like... <laughs> I think that's cool. We know where the buttons are. We know what they do. Now, obviously, the next thing to check would be well, yeah, the first club meeting. But we don't have the first club meeting. I'm not interested in the first club meeting, necessarily. I have other dates that I want to keep in mind. Oh, what are the other dates you want February to keep in mind? February 7th, 1997. February 4th, 1997. That's what I mean. Why February, February 4th, 4th, 1997? 1997. Because we're at the 10th anniversary. Of what? Oh. Oh, the 10th. Oh, you're so smart. It's the 10th anniversary of the of the of club, the astronomy club, which means the first club meeting would have been February the fourth, nineteen ninety seven. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're smart. You you cracked the code. I'm a dummy. I was I was thinking we'd get it from finding out about the control system, but actually we get it from the poster, and then we can use that to find out when the, they put in the control system. Which sadly will be in the two thousand section, that'll be in the but that's 2000s. okay. You're so all right. Can we check February the fourth, nineteen ninety seven? Sure. You look up February 4, 1997. The entry there reads, The Thampion Astronomy Club has officially launched. Our founding members are excited to see where the club goes. To track which members are using the observatory, we'll soon be installing a card reader. Simply touching one's membership ID to the reader will lock or unlock the door. Always make sure to lock up when done for the night. That is a very good work, Danny, but also nice work, Matt. That's great to have that there. I didn't know. Did you, when did you notice that? Danny, straight away and then laughed at me the whole time? Or just then? Uh, neither. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to say, we were looking at dates. Eventually I went, okay, what, what are some other dates? Are there any other dates that we yeah. might be interested in besides the ones that are outright listed there? Are. there? 
That's really good. I really like that. That's so. That's very smart. Okay, so there, that's all of the stuff we want to look up in the 90s. I think. The, the rest in the 2000s. One will be like February 4th, 2002, but we can't do that yet. Okay, so, because that would be the, exactly five years after the first mm-hmm. meeting. Um, good catch on it being... I'm going to tick off 2007. We've used that fact. Yeah, please do. Okay. Um, Should we look at more stuff around? Go back upstairs. We've got to head back upstairs, right? And we've, we've got, got to go to, to anything else. Do you want to check the, I don't know, the, the calendar, I feel like, will help us with other puzzles, like knowing what day a thing was. Um, Perhaps, but we should probably look at it. Right, maybe there calendar. are important things written on it. Can we check out the calendar on the upstairs of this observatory? You wander over to the calendar, and this image is what you see. So it is a calendar. It is laminated, and it only has the current month. The lamination is a little strange that kind of has a banding effect with the lights that kind of seems to line up with the uh, days of the week there. But Hmm. yeah, it's only February of 2007. And on that month, it shows various things that are happening this month. So this is a calendar. It's got lots of things on it. Most of them, very standard stuff. We've got lots of days with cleaning, some days with different repairs and fixes going on, maintenance-y things, club meetings, university, university research, research. The school, school open house, 21st of February. And Restocking then- a fridge. Dome maintenance, calibration of a telescope. They're having two different open house things this month. It's ridiculous. It's too much partying, guys. They love to party. Could the banding be important? Like, like if you if you zoom in on the Sunday, it's well, it's not very distinct. If it was more distinct, I'd be like, that goes through the U of Sunday, and then like the E R H of anniversary open house, and the E N A sort of area of dome maintenance. But I feel like maybe that's not, like, it's not as clear enough of a line to, to tell. It's, yeah, it's not impossible. It's really interesting the way that's working. But yeah, it's just a very subtle band of light going through each of these columns. But you made such a point of it. It's got to be a clue. Well, yeah, maybe there'll be something else that we can like, put over it or something. Maybe. And get we'll a figure bit it of an out. Image. As for now, let's, maybe let's... there is something. Can you zoom in just a, just one more time? Even like when you zoom in, it gets less clear in a way. That's way. true. It's too, it's I think it's too subtle to think of it as it's, like highlighting particular letters. Yeah, it's pretty subtle. But let's continue to to examine the world. Sure, sure. There's still stuff to look at. We don't mm. need to get caught up on a puzzle that we might not be able to solve yet. Yeah, I feel like we've looked at the tiny stuff. We've looked at the clock, the fridge, and the calendar, but not the fancy desk, the fancy panel, the fancy no. telescope. So can we, why don't we have a look at the desk? Maybe, and if we have to choose, I'd start with a binder before the computer. Okay. All right, so you wander over to the computer desk. Uh, The desk doesn't have any drawers, but on top of the desk, there's this computer and an open binder. You see the binder has a label 2007 on it. And next to the computer, there's a small container of floppy disks and a chair sits (laughs) in front of the desk, too. 2007 in the collection of floppy disks. Come oh, on, guys. Get with the times. Get uh, rewritable CDs. Where are your guys? CD-ROMs, guys? Where are your rewritable CD-ROMs? What does ROM so mean? An- I don't know. so annoying that computers don't have CD drives anymore. I know, right? What am I going to do so with all these old games, games I want to play? Sitting, sitting on top of our shelf right now. Uh, okay. Can we have a look closer at this 2007 binder? What, what, what is in there? You flip open the binder, and kind of similar to the uh, log books that you found in the filing cabinet. This one seems to be for the current year. So there's not a lot in there since uh, it's still only mm-hmm. near the beginning of February. But yeah, there's things written down that happened on pretty much each day so far. Are these the astronomy related things or is it just building related things? You kind of casually glance through the entries and they are either things that they observed on different nights or things that happened uh, related to the club or okay, other things that just okay. happened we, on different. Knowing we've only got a couple of, of 2007 sort of dates. Can I check January the 8th? To, yeah, the 50th to look member 50th being inducted. Member. How heavily did they haze this member? <laughs> yeah, you look up January 8th and the entry there reads... Wow, with the addition of Daniel, we now have 50 official members. Now that we've gotten this big, we've we've decided to start locking the supply closet. Members should only access the closet if they're part of the monthly cleaning schedule rotation, not to store your personal belongings. 
Okay. Monthly cleaning rotation. And we have on our calendar some ideas for the monthly cleaning rotation. It's on the 3rd, the 9th, the 15th, and the 20th Hmm. of February 2007. Can we have a look at, like, the 3rd of February has passed. Is there a note at all about the cleaning that happened on the 3rd of February 2007? You look at that day and, yeah, it just has a real brief thing saying that, yeah, they did some cleaning and maintenance, but, yeah, nothing that is of importance. All right. What else could we learn from that cleaning schedule? Saturday, Friday, Thursday, yeah, and the 28th, which is a Tuesday, then a Wednesday. Does that help us at all? What do we need for the closet? That's the digits. Oh, it's a keypad. Yeah, one to nine. I mean, can we put in... Yeah, what's your plan? Three nine one. F- I don't know how many digits it takes. We can do three nine one five two zero two eight. I don't think there was a zero. We were told one to nine. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, the keypad has digits one through nine, and as you start typing stuff in, and yeah, you realize there is no zero. Uh, after the fifth digit that you enter, you hear a buzz and a r- red light b- blink. Mm. You could almost like because this is a grid. Like if you just looked at the top right corner. You could go like cleaning, cleaning, cleaning as like the top right, the middle, and the bottom left of a three by three, like number pad. I mean, that's true. But that then, how would you do the the last two? Like, you wouldn't really, mm. unless there's a way to deliberately put those over each other. But not. I mean, only if I arbitrarily chose one that was nice, it, it wouldn't make sense. But there's kind of there are they are in a grid already. Maybe the banding does the does this lock have banding on it that looks the same? Uh, nope, it's just <laughs> the the three by three of the um, the digits one through nine. Well, there's something there, but I'm not quite sure how that works. Yeah, not yet. Got to be something though. Keep looking. Keep looking, I suppose. I dread the idea of going through these floppy disks, but yeah. Well, first of all, is there any other 2007 date we're interested in? We could check the date of like yesterday. Like, can we check the fourth? Why? Just in case they were like, we locked this loser in. Ha ha ha, he's sleeping under a poster. Yeah, that's fair. You know, can we check if there's any note from, from the party last night? Do you look at last night's entry? It reads, tonight's the 10-year anniversary open house of our club. Hard to believe that it's already been 10 years. And then someone else's handwriting. Turnout was great, but I'm too tired right now. I'll finish cleaning up sometime later tomorrow. Later tomorrow, we'll be fired by then. We'll be, if we turn up late one more time, Mr. Simmons is going to fire us. He keeps saying, oh, you're on your last legs, kid. And then what do we do? We'll have to go back home. I don't know who's going to pay for our mother's expensive tastes. No, no, she's perfectly <laughs> healthy. She just buys a new dress every two hours. And they're all very expensive and she won't stop. She's she's got out a third mortgage on the house. Sorry, when I said her kidney thing. operation, um, I meant that uh, she has very she she eats kidney the food a lot uh, to the oh, point where she wants to invest. She in... wants to start a kidney selling like a like exactly. a kidney business where she cooks up kidney. That's her kidney operation. Yeah, be like Americans don't like awful enough. I'm gonna bring it to the to these to the mainstream. To the mainstream. Everyone's gonna I'm gonna start a five star Michelin awful restaurant. Called the kidney operation. And we send her 10% of our paycheck every week. Oh, no, no. It's not 10%. It's 100%. <laughs> we make no money. We, we sleep under posters. <laughs> we eat stolen good. Like, that's the whole reason we came to this party was for dinner. Because all of our money goes to fund our mother's <laughs> kidney operation restaurant. Okay. And her dresses. <laughs> she keeps spilling kidney on the dresses. Yes, and she just throws them out. I said, we could buy you a washing machine. She said, no, it's been ruined. More kidneys. <laughs> Kidney is disgusting. I hate it. If it touches my clothes, I throw them out. <laughs> then why are you starting a kidney restaurant? She's crazy, our mother. <laughs> Maybe we should stay at the observatory. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny, we have a room to solve. What are you wasting time doing bits? Um, what are we looking at? There's floppy disks. Yeah, let's check out the computer and these floppy disks. Well, yeah, yeah. Are the floppy disks oh, labeled in particular ways? Can we have a look at the floppies? Sure. Yeah, so the floppy disks, uh, you kind of flip through the container. There are three in there. Just kind of standard floppy disks. Uh, it says that they're a brand named Shadow Media. Each one has a single word labeled on it. The first one is labeled Utilities. The second, Simulation. And the third, Archive. Okay, 
what do you want to do? You, that, that's only three. I thought it was going to be 800, but it's three. So we can look at them all. I suppose that's true. Also, it's called Shadow Media. So that's going to be that's important. That's pretty sus. Um, can we have a look at the utilities floppy disk? Uh, you want to insert that into the computer? Yeah, let's do Oh, that. yeah, sorry. Yeah, we should also look at the computer first. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the computer? Is it, can we even log on? Yeah, so you look at the computer. It's quite old, even for 2007 standards. Mm -hmm. uh, it is lying flat on a desk uh, with a small monitor on top. There's a standard keyboard slot for floppy disks. You don't see a mouse. It seems to be old enough for even that. There's a power button in the center, but the computer is currently off. All right. Let's turn it on. Turn it on, load it up, see what happens. All right. So you power it on. Takes a minute to kind of warm up and... After it completes its boot cycle, uh, you are greeted with a prompt that asks you for a password. Space. You want to put space? I assume it's right. All right, we'll put in space. You type that in, and it says incorrect. Okay. Well. This, is, uh, this isn't the era of password hints. That was more of a 2003 thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we need a password for the computer. Do we have anything that's a password that we've seen? Do you think? Everything could be a password for yeah, things. Yeah, good point. Or what about solar systems? Uh, da, 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 there are the lots of words there. That is written in the night sky by the divine. Yeah, okay, get out of here. All right. Um, so we need a password. So we can't worry about that yet. I don't Sweet. know what the password is. Okay. I'm assuming it's not just going to be throwing in random keywords from nearby. That seems unlikely. So let's quick, look at something else, shall we? look at the telescope. I can't imagine yeah, we can do Yeah, let's look at the telescope. With it. The telescope is mounted on a stand that can rotate all directions, uh, north, south, east, west, and up and down. Uh, the eyepiece is accessible for viewing, and you notice there's a bundle of wires connecting the telescope to the computer. That makes sense. Well, look, we need to open the computer up for that. So can we check? Oh, what do we want to do? do we, want to... we could open the dome. Can we look at the dome controls? Sure. The previous night, you saw the club members using this to uh, rotate the dome and presumably open and close it. Uh, the dome control panel, it consists of six buttons, two rows of three columns, but all the labels on them have been worn off. Who even cares? We know what the buttons do. We figured this out. Let's open the dome. Okay, what do we need to do again? Hold on. Where's the manual? Uh, to open the dome. Oh, first there's power on the system. Can we hold the top left and top right buttons simultaneously? You hold those down and a little power LED comes on. Nice. Can we press the top, top right, right button, button twice, twice? And then hold the bottom left button. You press the top right twice and hold the bottom left. And as you hold the bottom left, the dome slowly opens, revealing the skies before sunrise. Before sunrise? Why is our alarm set that early? Because Simmons will fire us if we don't turn up. That's Could you it. hear about this guy? I suppose, again, February, Michigan. When does the sun rise in winter? Oh, like 10 p.m. <laughs> Goes down again at 11. Just a real <laughs> quick, like, hello. <laughs> it's me, the sun. Bye. Um, this is what we know about the Northern Hemisphere. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, oh, I'm, I'm the sun. Bye. It rises at 2, sets at 2.30. So that's very reminiscent of our winter in England. So mm. it wouldn't surprise me. We've opened the dome. Can we step out? Like, how does the dome is open? Can we like to the north oh, right now? Yeah, to the north. Yeah. How could we? Could we stick our hand out? Could we step out oh, and fall to our death? Surely it's crazy high. The the dome opening is a little bit above being able to just kind of look out, um, but you do see the chair next to the computer desk that you're able to kind of stand on um, in order to get a little bit better height. You look out the dome, and from here, you can just kind of see the countryside. And yeah, it's definitely, while there's room to kind of maneuver and such, it's definitely not the option to uh, be able to jump out here. You see a lot of like thorny bushes below, and the ground is kind of hard. And yeah, technically, you might be able to jump out here, but yeah, you would not. It's not advisable. Uh, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want to head to your job when you're done, not the ER. <laughs> now, my next thing is, if we want real sunlight to be coming in here and helping us out, then we'd need to turn the opening to the east. Let's turn it to when, the east and see what happens. Can Do we have the ability to turn it? Yeah, yeah, of course we do. 
We go to our calendar. Our, our, our it's manual. the telescope that we can't turn. Yeah, we can't turn the telescope, yeah, yeah. but we can rotate the the dome. Could we press the top left button twice and then hold the bottom right button to go? L- no, wait, the bottom middle button to go right and go for 90 degrees and stop facing the east? Sure. The dome rotates and now the opening is facing to the east. All right. So it's still pre-sunrise, so we might still have some time to wait, but I want to take that frozen glass and put it somewhere in the path of that so that when the the sun rises... On the lip of the dome. Oh, when it rises. Oh, when that day comes. Um... (laughs) I'm assuming it doesn't hit melt it, right? <laughs> no, yes. it's, it's, yeah, it's still a balmy uh, February <laughs> Michigan day, and so I forgot e- about even... it being Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> yeah, wow. e- even if the sun were up, yeah, you would think that it would still probably take well over an hour to melt yeah. the glass just with the the sunlight. Yeah. You're right. All right, so let's ignore that. We need to find the light bulb for the sun. What are we stuck at now, right? Because we can sort of move the dome around. Let me tell you some special notes that I've made. Give me some special notes that you've made. uh, No sun bulb. No sun, okay. Missing an orange and a lime. We are missing an orange and a lime. A picture of a raffle thing with a lock on it. A picture of a beep boop beep boop that says five digits next to it, potentially, or at least it locked out after five digits. Monthly cleaning rotation, 3 9 15, 20, 28. A door with cars outside and a card reader on the outside. The Shadow Media, three floppy disks. A tape that says Rapunzel, which I assume means that you can just keep pulling it. Uh, or maybe climb with it, but it'll be really long tape. Oh, that's a good thought, that it's just long Rapunzel tape that we have to drop down from the top of the tower to let down our hair to get to the door. Could be. We need to stick it to a, to a card, but we don't have a card. <laughs> Okay. You definitely cracked that code. So the question is... See, I assume it meant that we could climb on it, so really it'll be our way to okay, rappel back in, down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so now we actually have a lot of places that we can input information, but we need to find what that information is. Yes, there are two keys that we're missing, one for the cabinet, one for the raffle box. We're missing the code for the closet, and we're missing the password for the computer. The code, the, the code, the code for the closet... We have been, we've had hinted at us, which is it's to do with the cleaning schedule. Yes. And we have the, the, this, this little calendar that looks that it's in grid form. How could we figure this out to somehow be relevant to a three by three beep, boop, beep? How can we turn the cleaning schedule into that? Uh, I have some... I did. I've got lots of things trying to figure out what else it could connect to. So it could out, be it could be self-contained, obviously, or it could be related to other things. So, for instance, uh, the floppy disks were called shadow media, shadow light. Maybe there's a connection going maybe on. There, there is. Um, we had we've got bunches of dates, which feels like it could very well be related to all of the solar system facts and things that we've got. We've it's, got planets that connect to the days of the week. It's true. Oh, do we? Well, that could get us like a weird order, right? Like, because they're all on different days. There's a Saturday, a Friday, a Thursday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. Hmm. But like, we could order those in the order of the you know, of of the actual solar system, right? So the first one would be, uh, well, there's no Sunday. It'd be Wednesday, right? Mercury. So like. Wednesday the twenty eighth. Do you mean? Sorry, how are you deciding to go with Wednesday the twenty eighth as a first one? Because each of these cleaning ones is on a different day of the week. Yeah, and we know we've been given the information of which days of the week correspond with which planets. Yeah, so we could put them. We could put the dates in the order of the planets, right? So the first, pl- like Wednesday, is the first planet. It's Mercury, right? Yeah, and what would your follow up be? I don't know. Basically, yet, but we can I was order thinking these cleanings. I was thinking almost the exact opposite of that. I was going right down. So we have a Saturday followed by a Friday, a Thursday, a Tuesday, then a Wednesday, and uh, figure out the planets true. that associate with them because they actually have numbers one to nine. Oh, because they're just numbered one to nine. Okay, that's cool as well. All right, so Saturday is obviously Saturn, which is six. number six. Without looking, I'm trying to make sure I can do right. this. And then Friday is next, which is, what is Friday? Frigg's Day. 
Yeah, and what is that in the solar system? Yeah, it's bloody... Where's our brochure? Why don't we speak more French? Friday, Venus. Venus. Really? Okay. Okay, so that's two. Thursday. Jupiter, apparently. Thursday. Well, I just wrote a J. What am I doing? <laughs> is Jupiter, which is... Five. Five? <laughs> Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, yes. <laughs> and then uh, the next one is Tuesday, which is Mars, Thor's, Thor's Day, which is Mars Day. Which is four. And Wednesday, Woden, Mercury. Mercury, which is one. So if we do the dates, the cleaning in order of the actual date, the 3rd, the 9th, the 15th, the 20th, and the 28th, we take the weekday of those dates and we turn them into one to nine where Mercury is one and Pluto is nine. That's why we had to have Pluto. So we knew there were nine. We would get the code 62541. Can we go to this? Can we give that a shot on the closet? Can we go down to the closet and go 62541? You enter 62541 on the closet and a green light blinks and the door unlocks. Oh, it's so good. I feel pretty bloody good. I throw the lock away. (laughs) I rip it off the wall. I throw it away. Oh, that was good. That was a good puzzle. Okay. Uh, We open it up and we look inside. What's in the What's in the closet? So inside there are a few shelves. On the top shelf, there's an assortment of light bulbs. The middle shelf, there is an empty can of paint, and then there are also some various cleaning supplies. Empty can of paint. What color does it look like it was? Orange slime. <laughs> yeah. So this paint can, it's fairly old. It's empty. The label on it says "Glow in the dark paint for wood." The instructions on it ah. read that after applying to a surface, you can shine a bright light on the surface for a few minutes, and then the surface will dimly glow in the dark for several minutes after the light source is removed. Oh, that sounds exciting. Ooh, nice. So either the bright light will be the sun that we're going to light up, so we turn that on for a bit, then turn everything off, or the normal lights have already been the bright lights, and we could turn the lights off and do a quick search for anything glow in the dark. I mean, I reckon we should probably... Get, grab a light bulb and put it in and make that Let's happen do the first. Sun first. Can we grab a light bulb, head over to the sun, <laughs> plug. Head, now, when you say head over to the sun, head over to the sun. <laughs> I mean, go to the dome, open it up, leap into the air using the power of Earth's yellow sun, and uh, as and long as there. we're clear. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, go downstairs to the diagram, you fool. Uh, can we put the light bulb into the sun part of the solar system model? Sure. You scrounge around the light bulbs. Uh, most of them are oh, fairly Best standard uh, uh, room lights, but you notice one is labeled as a heat lamp, and it's kind of tinted yellow. It looks similar to the sun that yeah, was in the model the previous yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's get that 200-watt bulb. All right, so you insert that bulb into the uh, solar system model, and it fits perfectly. And if I recall, you had previously plugged in the model, uh-huh. and so... Oh, that was when... a bad idea to plug the light bulb in at this point. <laughs> so as you screw it in, it immediately turns on, and you almost burn your hand as it's uh, emitting light and heat uh, instantaneously. Whoops. Um, no, and bright. it's definitely bright, and you see as the system powers on, the uh, wires of the model start to... Uh, lurch into motion so the planets are now slowly orbiting around occasionally the gearbox uh kind of pauses for a second you think there's some sort of fault but then the planets kind of continue on um as the planets are revolving around you notice some very dimly cast shadows kind of circling around the room Hmm. oh do those shadows do they highlight anything of interest uh, there's not much contrast to the shadows, so yeah, there's oh, okay. nothing really to see. Uh, what if we turn the main light off? Yeah, so you turn the main light off, and it takes a little bit to kind of readjust your eyes, and the shadows are much more distinct as they're kind of going around the room. Mm-hmm. Um, as the gearbox briefly pauses, they kind of freeze in place, and uh, they freeze next to three spots on the room uh, and form some interesting shadows. Uh, shapes. I just sent you another picture. What number is this one? Six. Ah, uh, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, okay. Oh. So near the filing cabinet, they make an image of Mickey Mouse's head. He's bleeding a little bit, which a is bleeding, scary. Horrifying yeah. Mickey Mouse. So it's basically we see three circular shadows, and the shape that they form happens to look a lot like a bleeding Mickey Mouse head. Yep. So that is near the filing cabinet. Mm-hmm. Cool. The supply closet, that's a snowman. 
Yeah, that's a little snowman going. He's doing a little wavy arm dance. So these straight lines that we're faintly seeing, would they be the shadows of the, the wires? I think so. The little thing yep. holding them mm, from, cool. the, from the bottom. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, that's a little dancing snowman. And then there is a shadow near the solar system model itself, which is like a, a black hole of an eclipse. It's like a target. This is all the planets are lined up perfectly. Something magic's going on. So the question is, uh, what? The question is what? What's going yeah. on? Yeah. What? Mickey, Disney, Disney, Frosty Target? Why do we want a Disney Frosty Target? Why do we want a Disney Frosty? I'll just write down Disney Frosty Target. We get it. I don't know what to do about this. One's clearly like a little Mickey Mouse there. That can't be, that's, mm. that, that can't be anything else. And then the <laughs> other one is definitely a snowman. Can we go to where the target lines up and like poke that bit of wall that's in the center of what that target would be? It seems just like a normal wall, nothing of interest. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Is that a, is this going to be the is this the password? Is there something here that could link us to a password? Oh god. Mouse snowtigant. Cuz what else could it be? I think it must I think it must link somehow to although let's well it's they're probably not going to be hints for those individual like locks or anything because one of them doesn't have a lock. One of them we have to have already opened to get to this mm. point, and the other is a filing cabinet that needs a key. Um, it's got to be the password or something. Shadow media feels like it's going to be related shadow, to this because this media. is shadow, and there are three of those. There are three of them. What were the three of them? Utility was... simulation archive. Well, the archive is the is the mouse. That's the filing cabinet. Yeah. Oh, the obviously. utilities is the, the sta- supply, supply closet, closet and, and the simulation. Is a solar system a solar model. System. That's a simulation. So, but how does that help us? Like, we now know that for shadow media floppy disks, utilities is snowman, <laughs> simulation is target, and archive is Mickey Mouse. When we put, with the computer, it asked us for a password. Was that for the computer itself, unrelated to the, to the floppy disk? Or was it for when we put the floppy disk in, it was like, you need a password for this floppy disk? The password was for the computer itself. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe we're not even up to this yet. Like, maybe we need to get the, the computer password so that we can access the floppy disks and then interact floppy disk with, with those things. Quite possibly. So I think that's maybe the case. This is for, we, we, we haven't yet got to where this input makes any sense because we can't get into the computer at all. It's possible that that's true. Have we tried putting the floppy disk in the computer and see if any, it changes, or do we need the password? Uh, sticking the floppy in doesn't seem to impact anything. It seems like you have to unlock the computer first. Okay, so where are we going to find the computer password? Is there a hint option for this password? Does it, is there like a thing we can type in? Uh, you try a couple other passwords, and after trying a few, it does uh, give you a hint. It says two words. What are we missing, Danny? What do we know... I don't the, want to know what we're missing. I want to know what we have. That'd be much more helpful. Yeah, what are we missing out of what we have? Is there anything we haven't used? Is there anything that Yes. Hit? What? The cleaning supplies in the supply closet. There's the energy drink. Yeah, that's true. It's Supernova brand. True. The Supernova as two words. <laughs> I'm assuming not. You try it and it does not work. <laughs> surprise, don't, I wanna, surprise. I don't just, yeah, I don't want to just try random words. No, no. I want to know. What love is. <laughs> yeah. And what so far, the way things are going, I have a lot of trust in this room and how things make sense in it. So I'm sure we can find something. Can we keep, do we want to do a full rotation of the dome? See if anything interesting pops up as we go around? Oh. Can we just like sure, hold right? Like obviously a- press action to whichever one it is, hold right and rotate and see if anything pops up on the horizon. Like, I'm the password store. Welcome to Passwords Are Us. You rotate the dome around, and yeah, from what you can see, it's just kind of the sky above and a few trees here and there that kind of poke out over the horizon. But you do see, though, when you go on the southern side, that you can see a clear view of the uh, exit door below. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I've, I've known that from the beginning. <laughs> you don't need to tell me that. Well, you know what? That adventure probably took us a few minutes. Should we quickly race back downstairs, unplug the solar system model, oh, and course, see if the God, glowing paint bloody glow has revealed paint. That anything? was what we hadn't checked. Yes, yes. Let's unplug the sun and see what the and turn the lights off and look for some glow in the dark stuff. All right. So you unplug the solar system model. Things uh, dim back down and. You turn off the room lights, and as your eyes adjust, you happen to see the planets are glowing, um, mm-hmm. and this is what they look like. 
Ah. Oh, boy. This, yeah, here we go. All right, so these are, they each have their names written on the planets. However, there is a letter missing from each. The letters missing are C, E, T, S, I, A, N, P, O. What did that spell, Danny? Uh, Captain Spock. But Captain with Spock? Captain spelled badly. Uh, well. C A T, cat. C E T. Oh, C E T, cat. Yeah, catch and po. So it's nothing in that order. Catch and po. Oh, Ketsy and po. But can well, you we can make it Captain Spock? If you spell things very badly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> can we try Captain Spock on the, on the uh, password for the computer? Uh, unfortunately, it does not work. Okay. We, let's anagram stuff. We've got to anagram this into two words. Do you think maybe. we need to anagram it? Do you reckon there's anything that tells us the order? Oh, there may well be, but I want to anagram it. You'd anagram, I'll look. Will do. I mean, we've got the letters of space in there. Oh, we do. Have, what's, what's left after you take out space? Uh, T-I-N-O. Space-tion. space Into Into space. Into, into space. Oh, into, into space. space. Into space. Yep. Can we try the computer into space? Does not space work. into? Damn it. Uh, yeah, it didn't seem like it says into would. space. Surely there's got to be some clue if we, for the order, rather than just a rearranging. There are, there are other clues, yes. Yeah, cool. Danny, why don't we go find the other clues? Uh, maybe we need the raffle. We haven't done anything with a raffle yet. No, we haven't unlocked the raffle. I don't know, can we just grind the raffle thing for a bit and see if yeah, any... Yeah, we have a ground the raffle thing. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so you go back to the raffle box and you kind of crank it to tumble. From what you can tell, it's mostly just yeah slips of paper, different business cards. But as you turn it, you do happen to see a, a glimpse of brightly colored uh, inside there. Uh, and you kind of shake it a little bit. And inside there, you happen to notice that someone left their membership ID card yep. inside. Yep, yep, yep. That's what we need to open the door. But that doesn't help us, Ketsy and Poe. That's okay. I'm going to put a big star next to that. Okay. We haven't used this Equinox solstice stuff. No, that's true. Um, it is letters written in the night sky, though. It does say. That is kind of what we've been dealing that is, with. We do have letters written on That's planets. That's pretty sus. Planets were signs from the gods that spelled out divine messages. Hmm. Rituals formed around the solstices and equinoxes to interpret these omens. So we understand how the planets tilted axis and orbit changed the seasons. So what would that mean for us? How do we, how do we solstice the 20th? Like, I don't understand. No, that's a bloody good question. Is there anything else on the back of the door to the solar, to the, to the, um, either, well, we've checked our door. Is there anything on the inside of the door to the supply closet? Nothing of interest, uh, in the supply closet. You've already yeah. gotten the bulb and, um, you've determined the glow in the dark paint. Um, there's the cleaning supplies though. Oh yeah. We never looked at the cleaning supplies. Let's look at the cleaning I supplies. I said that at one point. I said, I said the word cleaning, but then we had something better to do. Yeah. Can we have a look through those cleaning supplies? Yeah, so there's various uh, chemical solutions and such, but most of them are pretty empty. Uh, there is an abundance of uh, paper towels, though. Why do we want paper towels, Danny? Why do we need paper towels? Are any of the planets wet? No, all that glow-in-the-dark paint has dried a long time ago, so... I don't know what the point of a paper towel is. Hmm. It's to clean up a spill. Or to cover something in paper. There are no spills to clean up. The fridge. Was there anything interesting else about the fridge? It had the frozen thing, which is not melted. That's fine. And the 10 drinks. Oh, wait. No. What? We have what we were waiting for the whole bloody time. <laughs> oh, we, right. We set up. We said, let's do that. And then we got lamp. caught up with the bloody... Yeah, can we take the thing down to the sun, to the heat lamp on and do good what point, we said we point. did 20, 30, 40 minutes ago? <laughs> and just do the there thing that go. we were waiting for now that we've accessed it. All right. God, we're yeah. dumb. <laughs> you distracted us with the glow-in-the-dark paint. You gave us a little thing to follow. We had plans. <laughs> All right, we go in and act our old plans. All right, yeah, so you take this uh, frozen glass and, yeah, you plug the solar system model back in so it's uh, nice and warm, uh, and you carefully press the cup against the sun. Um, 
gets kind of warm, so you use your sleeve a little bit to kind of hold it so you don't burn your hands. <laughs> um, and uh, the the syrup slowly melts, and it seems like the key is now able to be extracted, but it's covered in a lot of goop. Not for long, we got paper towels! All right, you clean it off, and now you have a pristine brass key. Now, what was this the key to? The other half of the filing cabinet. We opened the other half of the filing cabinet. So the key fits perfectly. Hmm. Inside, the drawer opens to reveal binders labeled 2000 through 2006. Okay, so there are certain dates we want to check. One of these dates will give us a hint as to the telescope con- communication control whatever stuff. Okay. We don't have access to that yet, but let's check it out anyway, because maybe it gives us an idea for the password for the Absolutely. computer. Absolutely. Can we check out the date? Uh, February the 4th, 2002. 2002. February 4th, 2002 reads... To celebrate our five-year anniversary, we just got a new computerized control system for the telescope up and running. It'll be very handy in tracking objects in the sky compared to the old manual system. It took most of the day to get it installed, but it'll be worth it. To protect our investment, we've decided to password protect the system, starting mm-hmm. with Solar Flare for now, but we will plan to update it a month after each equinox. Hold on. So it says it was Solar Flare. Yep. And then a month after each equinox... They update it. Yep, yep, yep. So, so it's been updated multiple times. Of course, but what's? So that was on in February of twenty uh, of two thousand and two. Yeah. Right. So then yep. they changed it in March, and then in June, and then September, December. Wait, wait, wait. Why do you oh, say sorry. that? They changed it in April. And it just said after the equinoxes, right? Not the solstices ah, and right. equinoxes. Thank you. So they changed it in April, then they changed it again in October. Okay. Now it's 20, 2003, and they changed it in uh, April and October. And now it's 2004, and they changed it in April and October. Now it's 2005, and they changed it April and October. And now it's 2006, and they changed it April and October. And we haven't yet gotten to April So can we check the uh, entry for October 23rd, 2006, and see if they wrote their password down in it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so you look up October 23 of 2006. The entry there reads, Nothing to see tonight, too cloudy, but took time to update the password and do some cleaning. And there is a hint written uh, next to it. I will put it's in the chat. Catch, Danny. I was just going to put in Solar Flare 10. <laughs> 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 I think they just keep adding a number to the end. Oh, we got a bunch of numbers here. Ah, okay, so the hint is, yep. can you read those out, Danny? 48612. 48612. And then second word, yep. four three six mm-hmm. three five nine seven. Great. Well, we know what that is. So yes, those will be do. referencing each of those planets in order. So like that four makes sense. It's one to nine again. Is S ah? Uh, so we get from four so eight six one four two. was Mars. It's the S of Ketsian. Yeah. Po. So meaning yeah. So yeah. Ketsian Po was us doing the planets in order. So we'll just take the numbers, and instead of having to go by planet, we can just go by letters. So yeah, S, then the eighth is P, the sixth is A. Yep. And then one, one and two are C it and was E, space. so it is space. And then the next word is S, T, A, T, I, O, N. Space station. Space Station. Good hint, people. You did well. Good catch, Danny, on actually going to that date. We know the password with the computer. Before we leave, though, is there anything else we want to look at in the 2007s? Uh, we could look at the 50th member induction. No, that's in the that's in the, the thing upstairs. We already did that. So I think we're good. Can I just ask? Matt. Sure. Did your heart do a little ectopic skip a beat when I said, I enter the password space? There Just for a was second, a, uh, there was a <laughs> second. There was like okay, and, and I actually, um, I, I have in my notes here the first time that you uh, enter something incorrectly that it gives you the hint of two words, but I delayed that a little bit so you didn't just add, tack something onto space. Yeah, bad, <laughs> oh bad, bad, boy, bad. that could Station? well have happened. Yeah, quick thinking. All right, that was very good. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we go up to the the, the computer. We go. We type in space station like this. And we put in space station, and what happens? You type in space station, and the screen unlocks. It reveals a terminal application, um, and the application looks like it can control the telescope. 
there's a variety of menu options, but there are two that stand out that seem more u- useful. The first one is database search, and the second is external data. If we put in uh, the utilities floppy disk, does anything happen or do we have to click on external data? Just inserting it doesn't seem to do anything. All right. So can we can we go to external data? I suppose we don't have a mouse. Can we type in external data? Can we type cd slash, or cd mm-hmm. space, eternal data, c dot dot, colon. c colon slash slash, uh, and then get the C drive, and then go. Run. Oh, no, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want the C drive. We just put in a in a floppy disk. It's probably like the D drive, okay. E drive, or something. So we go D, D colon com. slash slash. Uh, get into the open dot exe. CD space uh, snowman. <laughs> yeah, can we get to that? Yeah. Can we get to external data? Sure. I haven't used DOS for a while, man. DOS is cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you you select the external data option, and it starts reading from the A drive uh, with the uh, disks there. Yep. Of course, it's uh, the A drive. It was always the A drive. Yeah, uh, yeah, and so on this, uh, it brings up a star chart. Uh, there are six stars that it shows, and actually, when you insert, you said the utilities disk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the telescope immediately pivots to point at this constellation. Um, it is over to the northeast um, near the horizon. And kind of curious, you repeat this process for the other disks. Hmm. And here are the star charts that you see. Eight. We're back in order. All right. So for utilities, we have... Oh, these are good little floppy disks as well. For utilities, we have in the northeast, we've got like on the little grids, right? On the left, it's got one degree, zero degrees, negative one degrees, negative two degrees. On the bottom, so for your x-axis, we have 44 degrees, 45 degrees, 46 degrees, 47 degrees. And on the intersections of a bunch of those... Uh, grids, there are numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're in an order so that, say, if you copied them with your pencil, you'd make a number six. One in the top right, two in the top left, down three in the bottom left, four in the bottom right, five in the middle right, six in Looks the middle like left. Looks like a six. It'd make like a six. And simulation is, says it's in the southwest, so the degree numbers on the x-axis are a little different because yep. they are now fitting the southwest quadrant instead. From, yeah, 224 to 227. And this looks like with their 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 star order, that looks like it's forming a 5 or an S. Yep. Six could be S. GS. G, uh, could. And then the final one from 359 degrees to 2 degrees in the archive section, it is... Uh, the one, two, three, four, five, six goes in a two uh, shape. Do, 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 do. So it kind of says six, five, two. This has not yet included the shadows that we've we also thought were going to be related Ooh, to the utility true. simulation and archive. Like it's like six snowman, five target, two Mickey. Do maybe they become letters? Like if it is snowman, the sixth letter of snowman. Oh. Uh, S N O W M A would be an A. The fifth letter of target, I, E-A-R-G-E, I would be an E. And then the second letter of Mickey would be an I. Is it A-E-I? Is what A-E-I as well? It. The solution. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we definitely feels like got a 652. What to do with them, I'm not sure. All right, well, why don't we look at database search and yeah, see what see, pops what up. Yeah, what else we might be able to search for in this database search. The screen shows a variety of filter options that you can search for. Most notably, there's uh, two things you can filter by. One is category. The other is visible wavelengths. It says you can pick one category and two visible wavelengths. The categories that are available are stars, planets, supernovas, nebulas, asteroids, and comets. And the visible wavelength options are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Oh, nice. That's an idea. Uh, can we go to supernova with orange and green? That's exactly what I'm thinking. This feels like soft drinks. All right. You filter through that, and it comes up with one entry. Uh, there's not any details about it, but it gives you the option to select it. G- done. All right. So you select it, and the telescope methodically pivots uh, facing <laughs> up in the sky towards the west. Uh, okay. West, can eh? we open the dome? Yeah. Move the dome that move way the and dome. take a peek. You rotate the dome in that direction, and you look through the telescope, and your final image is coming up. I'm glad that we didn't wait until after the sun had risen to try dealing with stuff. That would have made this part very difficult. 
I yes, assume. true. What so the? This is what you see. How would you describe that? Very okay. cloudy? Yeah. Tilted on its side is a monstrous children's cut, uh, like oh, children's no. uh, entertainment show live action puppet face. It's got two creepy big eyes, a big nose, and a and a and a, and a mouth smiling with a weird moustache, and it's been like, you know, it's upside down, Miss Pat. Um, it's a bit like you know when people try to make really nice, happy, smiley face cookies, but then they post it yeah, on Reddit because it didn't quite when, go to when plan. When the cookie rises, it explodes out of the, the happy and face, and suddenly it's crying and just turns into a monster. That's what it is, but it's on its side. Yeah. Um, it's got a big raised section or indented section. It's one of those light things that's always impossible to tell. Um, mm. But let's call it a raised section. So I guess we're looking at the surface of I don't know the moon. Yeah, so you kind of glance in that direction. Yeah, it's definitely looking at the nearly full moon. Um, You see a few prominent craters, uh, one in the center, one in the upper left and lower left, and a few on the periphery. takes a little bit to try and figure out what that is on the right-hand side. It almost looks like tire tracks. Um, You finally It finally dawns on you. You you first (gasps) thought kind of similarly that this was like the man, the moon, as you kind of tilt your head but this is the apollo 11 moon landing site so there's uh you see the tire tracks there and it was kind of hard to make out but you can just see the american flag planted in the lower right i I can see see that teeny tiny thing okay what does that that looks a lot like a staircase running up the side of a room oh my god you're right it does look just like a staircase running up the side of a room this is a map of the observatory but what does that what does that do for us? It shows that the people who built this observatory were nerds. We knew that. Yeah, we knew they're nerds. They're scientists. All scientists are big nerds. Okay, um, what does this do? What does that do for us? Yeah, what does that do for us? What is that highlighting? Like everything. That's, highlighting, that's the entire top floor. That's the top floor, right? We got the crater in the middle for the telescope. We got the crater in the top left for the desk. The crater in the bottom left for the fridge. The little small craters for the controls, the calendar, and the clock. And then the staircase up with it. Can we place an American flag just above the stair? Can we go to where the American flag is and check if there's something loose on the floor or something like that? Yeah, so you kind of wander around uh, near the top of the stairs there. At first, you don't notice anything, but yeah, you kind of poke around on the ground. And you do happen to notice there's one tile that has like some chipped edges to it. Good catch, Danny, that matches the room. That's so good. Remember, you flash back to the very start of the room, mentioned that the stair had railings and things, yeah. and that was it, uh, just uh, just to stop people falling over. And I said, a likely story. Yeah, right. What's under this tile? We paying st- attention to that staircase. We eat the tile. All right. So you take the tile up, and uh, underneath it, you find a small metal safe. Uh, you oh. pull the safe out. It's just kind of a small metal lockbox. Um, it has... A three-digit three combination. Digit. <laughs> um, and a, hurry, um, hurry, 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 six five two. Um, you, you quick, you quickly. Uh, We've had eight calls you. from Mister Simmons already. Where are you? And unfortunately, it does not work. No. Yeah, it does. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay. Uh, you, you examine the lock uh, a little bit more closely, and um, you see there there are some symbols uh, drawn in dark marker above each digit. Uh, okay, they look to- like Mickey's. Do they look like Mickey's snowman and targets? A target, a snowman, and a mouse's face. <laughs> okay, okay. So target is um. Okay, hold on. The middle. Uh, no, the target is <laughs> the simulation. It's happened. the two. It's the two. Target simulation two. two. I've got the middle one. Up. All right, and then uh, what was the next? Uh, simple. We put them snowman. in appropriate places. <laughs> then the snowman. Snowman is, is the six. supply. Six. Two, six, two, six, five. five. Uh, I think you have something backwards. No! Our utility. You're right. I've swapped my simulation and archive. Is six, and five, and okay, and the target is 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 five. So it's five six two. You enter five six two, and the safe opens. Ha <laughs> ha! We throw the safe away. Wait, no, wait. I need that. What's in there? You open up the safe, and uh, most notably, there is a envelope stuffed with a wad of cash that you Stolen. assume are the uh, donations from last night's uh, raffle. Uh, uh, you I think you find the donations. Those are the donations to our mother's kidney restaurant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Those have been uh, pocketed for pain and suffering. So you take a little bit of the money and you <laughs> find- Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't you temper our greed. We take it all. Okay, you you take all the money, and at the bottom of the envelope, uh, you also notice a tiny key. 
we Who take needs the key. science when we've got kidneys? All right. I don't even I don't even think I need you to describe this, right? This is what happens. We grab the key. We head downstairs to the raffle box. We unlock the raffle box and we dig in and we pull out that card. We take the 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 infinitely extending Rapunzel uh, sticky tape. We stick one end to the side of the of the card so that it hangs from the sticky tape. We run upstairs. We, we turn adjust the dome, the dome until to it's south. facing south. We jump on the chair. We dangle the card on the <sighs> eternal. This is me Rapunzel pulling sticky tape. Sticky tape. It goes down to the bottom. It's about to hit the, the the keypad when suddenly we didn't stick it on well enough. It falls to the floor, lands on the ground. We're stuck. We lose our job. Our mother is destitute and, every, and, and we're punished for our greed. Is that what happens? <laughs> Everything except for those last couple things. <laughs> Perfect. We ding the door with the keypad lock. No, no, wait. Hang on, hang on. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm not, I'm not ready for this yet. Bit. Danny's doing a bit. Because like, if we dangle it and we go ding, Oh no, the door's open, but we're upstairs. We're holding this. And as soon as we pull the key card away, there's only going to be a few seconds delay before it decides to lock again. I, I understand okay. it probably requires it to lock and unlock, but let's say it doesn't. Let's say it's like, you know, being led into someone else's apartment when they buzz you in. You've only got a small okay, window there. Sure. How do you so solve it? I've got a solution. We take the model solar system upstairs and attach the other end of the sticky tape to one of the planets that yeah. is slowly okay, rotating good. so that we have time to get downstairs to the door as the key card rotates. Rotates into place. Ah, what was your idea? I was going to say we have the key card up the top. We attach the handle of the door to one of the planets that's slowly rotating <laughs> with sticky tape separately. So as it ro- so, then we time it so we do the thing just as it rotates and pulls the handle <laughs> open, and then the door opens and we can leave. <laughs> Or we stick the sticky tape to the handle and run that separately around some other stuff up, and we have like a lever, like a pulley system, so we can ding the door, then pull the sticky tape, open the door, and then go out. Okay, but what if the tape is not strong enough to pull a door? I know Rapunzel was strong. Rapunzel's hair held up a knight in full armor. Look. In full armor. He was in full armor. Now, he didn't know what you the top say of that, tower. but again, my greatest knowledge of Rapunzel comes from the Simpsons episode and what happened to Rapunzel then. Oh, Tried to lift up out. Homer, all the hair just fell straight off. Okay, so we but we look, we have infinite tape, so we just we just ate octuple. Oh, okay, thickness. we plait it. Yeah, we plait the tape. We braid we it a so that it has extra strength. All right, we open the door. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Uh, yeah, so you unlock the door uh, through the uh, ID card and uh, dangling it down. You're a little uncertain uh, with some of the wind there, but yeah, it clicks open and you uh, are able to open the door. You rush out and hop in your car. As you pull out of the parking lot, you realize that you won't have time to stop by home to shower or have breakfast. But thankfully, the traffic isn't too bad and you're already on the side of town that's closer to work. And we you ate managed- plenty while we were in here. <laughs> you manage to arrive with one minute to spare before your shift starts. You sit down at your desk and your co-workers give you a strange look at your unkempt appearance before oh. continuing on to their meetings. Wow, do you have a story to tell them? You breathe a sigh of relief, finding it hard to focus on work as you reflect on your overnight adventures at the observatory. We you, know why, you know why they really looked at us? Why? Because someone put marker around the eye of the telescope. Oh, so if, they got uh, us the classic prank. They pranked us good, but luckily we stole all their money. Who needs science? 